India and the Philippines have been diplomatically connected since 1949, known as Indo-Filipino relations. Both countries work to keep a strong connection, with India having an embassy in Manila and the Philippines having one in New Delhi. A significant moment happened on July 11, 1952, when a friendship treaty was signed, showing the commitment to friendly relations between India and the Philippines. Early history. Many islands in the Philippines have artifacts showing connections to India. For example, a golden statue of a female bodhisattva found in Agusan indicates the influence of Buddhism from the late 13th and 14th centuries. Sanskrit words and literature were introduced between the 10th and 12th centuries and are still present in many Philippine languages. The Maranao folk narratives called Mahardia Lawana share similarities with the Indian epic Ramayana. Historical evidence like the presence of Rajanates in places like Cebu and Butuan points to significant Indian influence. Cebu even had a ruler named Sri Lumai, who was half Indian and half Malay. Hinduism had a strong presence in various Philippine societies, especially in central and southern islands as well as around Manila Bay and Laguna de Bay. Genetic studies also indicate the migration of South Asians to the Philippines, particularly among the Sama Bajau ethnic group. Between 1762 and 1764, in the midst of the Anglo-Spanish conflicts, 600 native Indian soldiers, known as Sepoys, came to the Philippines with the East India Company's military expedition. When the British forces left, some Sepoys chose to stay and made their home in what is now Cainta Rizal. Today, many of their descendants still live in and around that area. In the 18th century, there was a strong trade between Manila and Coromandel, coast of Bengal. The Philippines exported items like silk, cotton, sugar cane, and coffee during this time. The Philippines and India became diplomatic friends on November 26, 1949. About five years after India gained independence in 1947, the two countries signed a friendship treaty on July 11, 1952, in Manila, to make their friendship even stronger. Following that, the Philippine legation in New Delhi was set up, and later upgraded to an embassy. However, due to foreign policy differences as a result of the bipolar alliance structure of the Cold War, the development of bilateral relations was stunted. The Filipino culture was influenced by India. About 30% of the Tagalog language borrowed words from Sanskrit. Indian origins can be seen in the use of materials like brass, bronze, copper, and tin in Philippine art and metalwork. Early Filipino literature and folklore like the Maranao epic of Darangan and the Efugao tale of Balituk also show Indian influences. The Filipino folk belief about eclipses where some say a dragon called Lahao bites the moon or sun to cause the phenomenon, is linked to the Indian belief about the being Raho from the Hindu tradition. The Philippines supported India's bid for a temporary seat on the UN Security Council in 2011-2012, and both countries regularly consult in the UN and other international forums. In 2013, when the super typhoon Haiyan hit the Philippines, India sent an Air Force flight with relief supplies to help the victims. Additionally, after the typhoon Pablo in 2012 and the earthquake on Bahal in October 2013, India provided disaster relief assistance totaling 200,000 and 100,000 respectively. In July 2017, India immediately 
offered 500,000 for relief and rehabilitation in Marawi after a crisis. Ships from the Indian Navy and Coast Guard regularly visit the Philippines. In January 2022, the Philippines finalized a deal with India to purchase an undership missile system, BrahMos, for its navy at a cost of nearly $375 million. As the Philippines and India strengthen their defense cooperation, they are considering having an Indian defense attache stationed in Manila. This would mean having an official representative from India overseeing defense agreements and security developments in the Philippines. Recently, two Indian Navy ships in the Western Pacific engaged in a maritime partnership exercise with the Philippines Navy in the West Philippine Sea. The exercise involved various operational maneuvers, and the Indian naval ships are currently in the Western Pacific to enhance collaboration on maritime security with partner nations, especially the Philippines. Recent naval exercises between India and the Philippines in the disputed South China Sea have upset the Chinese military. China issued a stern warning saying that defense cooperation between countries should not harm the interests of other nations and regional peace. Tensions have risen between China and the Philippines with accusations of maritime accidents, including China allegedly ramming a Philippine military chief's ship. The Philippine Coast Guard accused China of firing water cannons and ramming vessels causing serious damage, while China claimed the Philippine vessel intentionally rammed its ship. China asserts almost the entire South China Sea contested by the Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Brunei. The Philippines insist it's not provoking conflict and stands by its claim on the second Thomas Shaw. The Philippines' claim on the Scarborough Shaw, backed by a 2016 UN arbitration decision, has been rejected by China, leading to tensions. Chinese Coast Guard ships have blocked Filipino vessels near the second Thomas Shaw resulting in near collisions condemned by the Philippine government. Do you think India should remain neutral in the disputed area in the South China Sea? Or should it take sides? Also, what's your solution to the current crisis in the South China Sea? In my next video, I'm going to talk in detail on who has the right to the South China Sea.